I'm going to put this video at the intro to a lot of my other videos because I think if people just randomly start watching one of my videos, they're really not gonna get out of it um, as much as you would if you go back a couple years to when I started. I would start with my first vlog and try to follow it from there because I think that's going to be the most helpful for you if you really want to get a sense of the big picture. Hello, it is Friday and man, I really wanted to <laughs> I wanted to make a video at home and I keep running out of time so of course I have to keep doing it in the car but whatever I'm getting used to that so whoo went to bed last night I had some weird kind of nightmares I say kind of nightmares dreams um, my dad is not usually in them and he was in it and my daughter was in it as well but she was looking a lot healthier and more like what she was before she got sick and but in the dream it's like my mom was there too and they knew that she was struggling but um, she had come to live with us I believe and she was <laughs> upstairs painting a room for my dad to try to surprise him. I mean, it was just bizarre, but it gave us some hope in the dream that maybe she'll get better. So I'm just gonna bring that up. Oh, construction again. Ah. And, uh, you know, I don't know that, I don't know what that means. I think it means I was worried, been worried about her and um, sometimes that happens when you're thinking about something and then you go to bed thinking about it and you have dreams about it. But when I woke up, I woke up early this morning and I was like, do I look at my phone? Do I not look at my phone? Because, you know, I'm, wait I'm just waiting for the phone call to come. I know it's coming. And what a relief to see there were no missed calls, no messages. So I was like, thank you, God and went through the morning like I'm debating do I contact the house do I find out am I better off not knowing I you know I go through my mind they'll let me know if something's wrong so maybe it's best I just sit here and think she's up in her room sleeping <laughs> which I know is not happening because that just when you're when she goes through mania psychosis there's no sleeping but anyway just keep telling myself that and I read my Course of Miracles and it was interesting and the reason I wanted to video at home was because I wanted to read some of it. Um, but it was, it's basically, it, it talked a lot about insanity, this world being insanity, that what we see is not real. Um, I guess the basic premise of it is we're living in this kind of illusion, like a dream we're living in this sort of dream illusion and to not take it seriously and to understand that this is not reality which is great for you know I guess it does help for those few seconds to think okay well maybe none of this is really happening and it just it helps bring me to that to the present to the moment and in the moment I'm just you know I'm sitting there drinking my coffee looking at the birds and in, I, it brings me to that moment where everything is is great if I don't think about anything external going on even if I get one second of just enjoyment um, enjoying that moment it's it's so helpful so that's been my morning I'm guessing today's gonna be that day of how do we get her to the hospital? That's really the toughest piece. And of course, as I'm walking out the door, I hear my phone ping and it's like, oh shit. You know, that fear, that's what I'm gonna be feeling all day anyway. But apparently she left a couple 
voicemails for her dad at like 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. and I didn't even listen to them. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to. I'm not sure that's going to help matters. So, I mean, I probably will. I probably will because I won't be able to help myself, but I don't know. Um, I just, I really want to know what their plan of action is to keep her safe. And I don't ever think there's really a plan. I mean, I guess it depends on reacting to how she acts. And yeah, that's the, it's just such a scary time right now because once again, it's dark and rainy and shitty outside. So that certainly doesn't help matters. And then knowing she'll probably wander out in this dark, shitty rain to go get her medication, which ought to be interesting if she goes to this dispensary I called last night and informed them, you know, probably shouldn't be giving her edibles, maybe just flour or whatever, just to be on guard. And I don't regret it. I don't. I think calling them was the best thing I could do and it's for her own protection. So, okay, I'm at work and I'm sure you'll be hearing from me again later. Whew, it's five o'clock on Friday and I'm leaving work and I'm not feeling much better than I did earlier. I spoke to uh, one of the counselors at the house that I've spoken to before. She's actually really great. And she said that I was hanging around the house, but she was completely manic and in a high state of psychosis, like just talking uh, nonstop. And it's complete rambling. Uh, some of it's stuff from the past. Some of it's made up. She just keeps going and going um, nonstop. She hasn't slept, which that's no big surprise. Uh, the good thing is she's staying close to the house, or she had, she was last I spoke to her. She had left the house once this morning, but she came back. And oh, and I guess she's having episodes of crying and laughing, but that actually um, that's always the case too. She's had that, yeah, since I can remember. So her rambling, so. There is not a whole lot that can be done unless she becomes a threat to herself or a threat to others. I wanted to call the dispensary again. I wanted to find out where she got it today because she got more edibles and I had called last night. So I'm wondering if she got them somewhere else. And I've been trying to get hold of her father and of course, nothing. Um, I don't know. He's always busy at work, but he and his wife both work from home, and I, I don't know. I, I I feel like it's not a priority. I can I understand I'm not a priority, but I'm not going to go down that road. Anyway, um, she, it's kind of like her leaving him a voicemail last night. Like I left my phone on. I actually turned my phone on in case I got a call. Yet he ignores the phone so but she wants nothing to do with me and that's that's that so um now it's just to hurry up and wait and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and this is the time when i feel very exhausted i feel very um i, I just don't know what to do at this point i guess there's nothing i can do and it's funny because when I was talking to the the girl the, at the residential place, I think she's the head um, person uh, counselor, but she, I said I didn't want her to go to the state psychiatric uh, hospital, and she's like, can I ask why? Why? Like, she's like, I mean, I try to put myself in your position and I totally I can't even imagine but she's like I was just curious why you don't want her to go there and I started thinking about it and it's like because it is the only place that would keep her 
everyone agrees she needs a locked facility where she cannot get marijuana because marijuana is what's triggering it. And it just, it got me thinking and I did some research, a little bit of research on this facility. And of course, you know, you go on the website and it looks like this grand place, right? So, um, but the, my biggest reasons for not wanting her in there are, I believe the state then takes um, guardianship, which she'd probably like that. So I would lose, I, I believe rights, but I, I'd have to look into that a little more because you know a judge granted us guardianship so I but I feel like when she goes in there we lose guardianship I don't know that for a fact I'd have to look into it secondly I worry that they don't get any outdoor time although even in a jail they get some outdoor time so maybe they do maybe they can even leave the facility to go please I, I don't know I really need to learn more about it um, I also don't really want her surrounded by that I just don't want her in that environment but then again is that really any worse than the psychiatric unit at the hospitals I mean I don't know maybe it's the stigma around it I don't know I do know that um, it's a good likelihood that a judge will send her there I mean she's had geez 14 I don't I don't even know anymore I probably always ramble the same number but it's around that, that um, number of hospitalizations and many of them have lasted months. So that's where they, she may end up. It might, I might have no say over it at this point because she's costing, she's just taking up a bed in the hospitals uh, way too often. So lots to think about but I can't go that far ahead. I really just have to think about the moment and hope that, um, hope that everything goes the way that it should with very little resistance from her. Uh, and of course, without anybody getting hurt. So that's where I'm at. Um, I gotta go inside. We're supposed to go to the grocery store. I literally have got to go to the grocery store because I have nothing. But this is what sucks. You know, you've got things to do. You've still got to kind of go on with your life, but your mind is so focused and you're so nervous for that phone call. Like you want a phone call to find out what's going on, but you don't. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible feeling. It's horrible thinking how much she I've of course tried calling and texting her, but she's not gonna answer. But you know, I just I wish she in her head, I wish I wasn't like the devil to her. I wish she I wish she could remember our love, our connection. And I, I pray that she, that she will someday. But okay. Alright guys. I'll let you know when I find out more. Okay, so I went to bed and I started reading before I go to sleep out of my Course in Miracles and I'm not going to put the <laughs> camera on me because I literally just got out of bed and it is 30 at night so I just kind of wanted to read what I'm the first things I'm reading give you an idea of why it helps because if any of you you know if this works for anyone else I highly recommend it but um, and so this is the Course in Miracles that I'm always talking about. As you can see, it's well used and it's a rather large book. But this lesson says, um, I have no neutral thoughts. Neutral thoughts are impossible because all thoughts have power. They will either make a false world or lead me to the real one. But thoughts cannot be without effects. As the world I see from arises from my thinking errors, so will my so will the real world rise before my eyes as I let my errors be corrected. My thoughts cannot be true nor false. They must be one or the other. What I see shows me what they are. And then the next one says, I see no neutral things. What I see witnesses to what I think. If I did not think, I would not exist because life is thought. Let me look on the world I see as the representation of my own state of mind. 
I know that my state of mind can change. And so I also know the world I see can change as well. So that being said, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna go to bed and I'm just going to think in my mind that, let me see. Anyway, okay, I did it. I turned the camera around and I'm in my, well, I'm in the shirt I wore today, but um, tonight I'm going to bed and I'm going to envision and think and tell, say it on camera that she will wake, I'll wake up tomorrow. I will either call over there or they'll call me and she will be doing much better and she will start to come out of the psychosis and maybe not have to be hospitalized at all. So if what we think is what our life becomes, then we really need to pivot those thoughts. And I'm really gonna give it a try tonight. We'll see what happens tomorrow. So I am sitting out on the back steps watching the sun. Um, it's pretty chilly today, but the sun is nice and bright. And I don't know what that little, I feel like there's a green thing <laughs> in the screen and I have no idea what that is. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. So I don't know what that little green thing in the screen was. Uh, so I guess I'll turn the camera on me. But anyway, I did want to update because last night I went to bed and I thought in my mind that I'd get a call or I would call the house and they'd say she was acting much calmer, that um, maybe she was coming out of it. You know, I was just trying to think of a new story, but it might have been too late for that, right? I mean, let's face it, we all know when the kid's in full-blown mania, it's not gonna go the other way. But I really did try to go to bed with positive thinking that things are gonna happen the way they should, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you guys get so ho -ho sick and tired of listening to my positivity, which I know a lot of people think is toxic positivity, but whatever. Um, I did get a call this morning and it actually, it could have been a lot worse because of course the phone, when the phone rings, my heart kind of goes into my throat like, oh God, she got hurt or she's missing or it, you know, it could be anything. She got arrested. I mean, it could be anything. So, but it was good. It was, um, the counselor over there that I spoke to yesterday, she's pretty awesome. And she told me that um, this morning, I, apparently she slept a couple hours uh, last night, which was amazing. But this morning, highly agitated, just storming around the house or whatever. And she called the therapist and they discussed it. Because she and I discussed this before. It's like, do what you have to do to get her to a hospital. Because at this point, she's not safe. Um, she's just not safe the way she's acting. It's just, she's in a craze. The hospital's the best place for her safety. So she was very strict. Usually when she's in mania, you treat her with kid gloves. You can't say this isn't, wow, you're not seeing things that are real or you're hallucinating. You, you can't talk to them like that. You sort of have to talk to them as though what they are seeing and believing is real but she's like I had to she's like I had to do something so she said I kept I followed her around I kept on her you know telling her she can't have marijuana telling her and following her around asking her a bunch of questions that's a huge no-no like she gets really agitated with that so she did she got highly agitated and they called 911 or whatever and the police came and when the police came she, they were outside and she was screaming her head off and she didn't see them pull in apparently or hear them. I don't know how, but they witnessed it and they asked her to take a ride. She said she would if another staff went, which is kind of surprising because uh, she's really afraid of police at this point. Like she 
has a huge fear of them, even though they are the ones that have helped her. She doesn't see it that way. And so they took her to the emergency room and the staff person went with her. And so it really was the best way they could get her there, right? Because she went willingly. They didn't have to handcuff her or anything like they've have had to in the past. She wasn't kicking and screaming and fighting. So that was actually not bad, you know? I, it's just fun. It, it's all, you have to put it in perspective, right? Like, yeah, my daughter got taken away by the police to the hospital, to the emergency room. That, good news, guys, good news. Honestly, this is our life. Uh, this is our life. So she's there. I, the hospital called me. And this is the other great thing is now, it used to be they, the hospital wouldn't talk to me at all. And now they know that I'm, now that they're learning her, they're learning, I think, me. They see I'm the legal guardian. They call me. So long story short, not really a long story, but they are blue papering her because she can't even have a conversation. I mean, she doesn't, she says enough that she doesn't want to be there, but she'll be there over the weekend at least. And I'm sure she'll be admitted somewhere, but I'm hopefully I'll hear back. Um, but <sighs> at least over the weekend, I know she's going to be safe. Um, they said she will likely be in that unit she's in the emergency psychiatric unit she's not moving because there's no beds anywhere anyway so that's where she'll be and they'll you know what they'll give her enough medication to put her to sleep to help her sleep do I like her to be drugged up no but she hasn't slept so she needs to sleep at this point she's either going to do drugs outside of the hospital or you know do edibles and whatnot or they're going to give her something to help her sleep it's a lose-lose situation, guys, but the least of the two evils, well, she's not walking the streets, and I am very, very relieved for that, so, yeah, that's that, and today, um, so this happened earlier, and then just, just a few minutes ago, my boyfriend heard, like, a huge bang against, it sounded like against the side of the house or a window, I didn't hear it because I was editing a video and somehow I missed it, but he looked outside and there was a hawk sitting on the, sitting here on the railing. Um, yeah, a hawk. And apparently he had looked out the window before and seen there were probably 12 doves. They like to sit on the ground here. We definitely have an abundance of doves who I, I love these doves. So, um, yeah. He heard that big bang, it said it sounded like a bird maybe hit the window or whatever, but oh, scared me to death to think that a hawk got the dove. But the fact that the hawk was sitting on the railing leads me to believe that he didn't, well, he obviously didn't get the dove or he'd be eating it. So he sat on the railing for a while watching um, and then flew off. And then, so I came out, looked around a little bit and well, I had him pick it up because I was very, I didn't want to see if there was a dead dove somewhere, but there was a clump of wings, of wings, yeah, a clump of feathers. And yeah, I looked down and saw that and I was like, you need to go, you need to go see because I can't, I, yeah, I love the doves. I don't want to see that, but there's no dove to be found. There's just a bunch of dove feathers. <laughs> so yeah, now I'm just kind of sitting out here because I saw the damn hawk come back and perch on a tree again. And I don't want it here because it's going to eat the little critters and it can do that somewhere that's not on my property because I just don't want to see it. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of sitting out here enjoying the scenery, but it's getting a little chilly and making sure the dove doesn't come back. But anyway it is pretty looking at the trees and all i mean it's starting to get you know it's fall in maine which is very pretty but it's it's a little beyond we're getting cl very close to winter so um it's not as pretty as it would be because a lot of the leaves as you can see have fallen to the ground so yeah okay well I probably won't be checking in within the next 48 hours because i doubt if i don't think much will happen Jesus, I think there's a ladybug in my hair. Something. Okay, 
Um, I will let you know when something happens. Bye. Tonight I'm looking at the moon from the window because it's cold out and it's very late and it's time for bed. But I'm just looking at the sky and saying a little prayer because I know this is that time where she's in her high state of mania and psychosis and I was, I figured I'd get a call tonight. I don't know if no news is good news at this point. I think the best news would be to get her safe into a hospital, but we'll see what tomorrow brings. It's almost 11.30, so I'm gonna go lay down. I'll leave my ringer on and pray that she makes it through the night safely and we'll see what tomorrow brings.